Okay. Welcome to another chapter uh, quiz walkthrough. We're doing chapter 11 right now. I'm just going to put the question numbers on here. You can go and find the, the questions. You should have them available to you. So for question one, you blow up a balloon in your kitchen and you put it in the freezer. Don't ask me why you did it. You know, you did, you put it in there. That's fine. When you take the balloon out later, it's much smaller than it was earlier. So we'll put the balloon back because we're going to need it for another question later. But what uh, law, which one of our gas laws, explains this observation? So the answer for this one is Charles' law. And the reason is, is that volume over temperature, so volume one, temperature one. So if we have these initial volumes and temperatures, volume two, temperature two. So if we decrease temperature, then we're also going to decrease our volume. This is called a proportional relationship. Okay. And it's part of P1, B1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. So this would be one of the combined gas laws. Um, here, we're combining Charles' law and Boyle's law. So Charles' law and Boyle's law are both proportional to temperature. I believe this is Boyle's law. Charles Law and Boyle's Law combined. So Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. And Charles Law again is V1T1 equals V2T2. All right, so for question one, Charles Law is the answer. Question two. Uh, now that you think about it, what law explains why the balloon gets bigger when you blow into it? And even when I'm doing these quizzes, you can always pause this and try and think about it again for yourself. Um, but at this point, you should have taken the quiz already. So, <clears throat> what, explain why, what explains why the balloon gets bigger when you blow into it? So when we're blowing into the balloon, we're adding air. And when we add air, we're adding moles of air. All right, so we're adding some quantity of air. We're adding some molecules inside the balloon. So if we increase the number of moles, then we have to increase the volume. So we have another proportional relationship between moles and volume, just like we had a proportional relationship between volume and temperature. So we could write this as um, I'm going to write out just a second here. PV equals nRT. Yeah. So we're going to have V over N. So V1, N1 is equal to V2, N2. So when we add gas in there, we're increasing our volume. And then this is the combined, the fully combined gas law. I'm sorry, the ideal gas law. All right, so this combination of N and V, um, just like Avogadro's number, this is Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law is this relationship between uh, number of moles, N, and volume. Okay, so number three, question three. If you watch enough Discovery Channel, you'll eventually see pictures of various objects taken down to the depths of the ocean. And they look like this, right? They go from this big styrofoam cup to this tiny styrofoam cup. This shrinking, which I forgot to put in the question, is caused by the air trapped in the styrofoam being crushed by the pressure of the ocean. 
So here we've got another set of gas laws. And we're working with pressure, right? I'll tell you here, shrinking from the pressure in the, uh, of the ocean. Really the water being pressed down on top of it. So we've got pressure and we have volume. So I say that the air trapped in the styrofoam shrinking, so volume's going down because they're going deep underwater into the ocean, pressure is going up. This inverse relationship between pressure and volume is Boyle's Law, which we saw just a little bit earlier. So we have here an inverse relationship. So P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. So as we increase pressure, we decrease volume. And the opposite is true as well. So if we decrease pressure, then our volume increases, assuming we have the same number of moles. All right, so question four. What is the volume of one mole of gas at STP? Uh, this is actually a constant. You can calculate it. So we have pressure PV equals nRT. That's your ideal gas law. R is a constant. And so if you're using uh, atmospheres and Kelvin, it's going to be 0, 0.0, uh, what is it, 814? I'll have to look this up right now. Eight one zero. Um, why, why am I not getting an easy answer here? Oh, there it is. Zero point zero eight two one, and this is in units of liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Okay, so STP means standard temperature, Oops, temperature, wow, and pressure. <clears throat> so if we plug into our equation here, Standard temperature um, is 290, I believe it's 298.15. Maybe it's Kelvin. Oh, it's 273. So standard temperature is 2. 73.15 Kelvin. And this Kelvin is the same as the Kelvin in our units of R. And pressure, standard pressure, is one atmosphere. All right, so that matches atmospheres here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say our question here has one mole of gas. So let me write these out. Temperature, right, equals our standard temperature, 273.15 Kelvin. Or pressure equals one atmosphere, and our number of moles, n, is one mole. So if we plug these things in, and we know what r is, that's up here, but I'll write it over here, right? r, 0 0.0812 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So if we plug these in, we have PV equals nRT. We want to solve for volume because our question is asking us, what is the volume of one mole of gas at STP? So volume equals, and we're dividing both sides by P, so we're going to get nRT over P. And we'll plug these numbers in. Volume is equal to, our n is one mole, times our R value, which is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, times our temperature, which is 273.15 Kelvin, 
and then we'll divide that by one atmosphere. And if you do this math, let me grab my calculator here. Oh, is my calculator broken? Let's just open the app. Or not, it appears that my calculator app is broken. Okay, so grab my phone. We're gonna do 0 0.0821 times 273.15. And that's gonna give us volume. And so we divide by one, we multiply that by the one atmosphere, so, or one mole. So we're gonna get 22.4 liters. Because when we go through these, we're multiplying, moles are gonna cancel, Kelvin's gonna cancel, atmospheres is gonna cancel. So we're left with 22.4 liters, and this is a constant. So anytime you see um, the mole of a gas at STP, that's a constant value of 22.4 liters. Okay. Moving on here then. How many moles of gas are there in 111? Sorry, question five. How many moles of gas are there in, um, and this is one of those questions where there's uh, multiple different values of argon that you can get. So we've got 111.3 liters of argon for my question. And we want to know how many, um, how many, how many moles. So hopefully what you were getting from the previous question is that in question four, for every one mole of gas, it doesn't matter what type of gas we have, one mole of gas is always 22.4 liters. So if we know this, one mole is 22.4 liters, then we can take our number 111.3 liters, multiply by, or sorry, multiply by one, and divide by 22.4, and that will give us the moles of gas. Oops, there's a typo in my equation here, so I'll go through and fix those, but 0 0.497 uh, moles of argon. Like I said, there's a typo, I guess, in my equation here, so I'll have to fix that. Um, if you got a number that is 10 times larger, or sorry, if the program tells you a number that's 10 times larger, so in this case, if we multiplied this by 10, 4.97, actually 965 because of rounding. Um, don't worry, you'll, you'll, you got the correct answer. I'll just have to fix that. Okay, moving on though. Question six, uh, this following reaction is used in oxygen candles to generate oxygen on submarines. What mass in kilograms should your candle be to generate uh, 1,070 liters of oxygen? Assume the resulting oxygen is at STP, and the entire candle is made of sodium chlorate. So now we're taking some of these concepts that we've dealt with previously and combining them what we know, with what we know about gases. So we're starting out with 1,070 liters of O2. And what we want to know is how much candle do we have to have? So it's this, the candle's made of two NaClO3 plus, oh sorry, just that makes two NaCl plus three O2. So we have a volume of O2 that we want to generate, but we also want to go back to how much of this do we need to make it? So this is a bit of a tricky question. So we're going to say, starting with this 1,070 liters of O2, we want to convert this then, this is a stoichiometry problem, we want to convert this into moles. So just like we did in question five, at STP, and this question does stipulate that we are working at STP, one mole 
is 22.4 liters. It does not matter what the gas is. So we can convert from liters of oxygen to moles of oxygen. If we write out a, so we're going to have liters of O2, moles O2, then we're going to convert to um, moles of NaClO3, and then we're going to go to grams NaClO3, and then to kilograms. That's going to be our whole setup here. So 22.4 liters per one mole of gas at STP. So that's the important thing there. So that's going to get us from liters to moles. And now we've got to go to moles of sodium chlorate. So take a second and guess where we're going to get that ratio. Pause the video. <clears throat> that ratio is going to come from our reaction equation, which we've been given and is balanced. So for every three moles of O2, we're going to, or to generate three moles of O2, we're going to need two moles of sodium chlorate. Okay. So let me write, I'll write this down here. So two moles NaClO3 to generate, let me use colon here. Right. That'll generate three moles of O2, and vice versa. So it can go both ways. But here, we've gone from liters of O2. We now have, let me write this in here for a little more clarity, moles of O2. So now we want to convert from moles of O2 into moles of sodium chlorate. So to cancel the units of moles O2, we're going to put this part in our denominator. So we'll get three moles O2, two moles NaClO3. Okay, now we've converted from moles of O2 to moles of NaClO3, and we're going to get now, um, well now we need to calculate grams, right, so moles to grams of that NaClO3. So we've got in NaClO3, we have sodium, we have chlorine, we have oxygen. Um, and if we look at this, our mass, all right, let me calculate, I'll calculate, calculate out the mass again. So we're going to have 22.99 for sodium, right, grams per mole, and then 35.45. For chlorine, I don't know if you can hear my upstairs neighbors stomping because I think there's a Niners game today. And then we have oxygen, so mass of oxygen is 16 times 3. Now, we can add these together, 22.99 plus 35.45 plus 16 times 3, so we're going to get 106.4 four grams per mole. So because we want to convert from moles to grams of sodium chlorate, we're going to put moles on the bottom. So one mole, NaClO3, 106.44 grams, NaClO3. And then we need to convert this from grams to kilograms. So for a thousand grams, we get one kilogram. And when we do all this math, 1070 times 2 times 106.44, oops, 106.44, divided by 22.4, divided by 3, divided by 1,000, actually end up with My goodness, they're loud upstairs. Close the window again. Um, oh no, I said in scientific notation. You end up with three point, oh interesting, that's off by a little bit too.
Oh, I see. I see what I did. Okay. You end up with 3.4 uh, kilograms of NaClO3. I'll go through and manually grade these uh, to make sure that those mistakes uh, don't cost you points. Uh, my mistakes don't cost you points, that is. All right, so that was the answer. 3.4 kilograms of sodium chlorate. So the key takeaway here is that this is just a stoichiometry problem. The key is that you're going from liters to moles. Um, and if we're at STP, you can use this easy conversion from 22.4 liters to one mole. All right. Coming back here, Q7. So, nope. remember that balloon that was in the freezer? Well, it turns out your freezer is actually uh, way stronger than it should be. So it's very, very, very cold. And we've cooled now from a room temperature of 298.15 degrees Kelvin. Uh, sorry, not degrees Kelvin, it's just Kelvin, to 149.075 Kelvin. Now, without opening the freezer, how much smaller is the balloon? All right, this is using, um, uh, whose, whose law was that? Charles' law, I believe. Charles' law, which relates temperature and volume. Okay, so here we've got uh, volume over temperature equals volume over temperature. And the key is this is V1, V, or sorry, V1, T1, V2, T2. So the volume here, we're looking for a relative volume. So we can just put in a volume here. Um, and actually, we don't even have to solve this as an equation. Because if we look at the numbers that I've chosen here, we go from 298.15. We can divide that by 149.075. And this is 2. So we've cut our volume, or we've cut our temperature in half. So because our temperature has decreased by a factor of two, we've cut it in half, then uh, the answer for this one is actually half, or I guess I wrote it as half its original size. So this is a problem where, since these things are directly proportional, then we can take the temperature, if our temperature decreases by some factor, we can take our uh, size and decrease it by the same factor. Um, if you wanted to plug this in, you could pick any volume for your V1. So let's say we have a one liter balloon, it doesn't matter. And we'll do 298.15 was our initial temperature. And V2 is what we're gonna solve for. And then our final temperature here that we end at, 149.075. So we can solve now for V2. And we're going to multiply 149.075 by both sides. So we get 149.075 over 298.15. And this will equal 1 half V2. So if we started with a volume of one liter, we now have a volume of half a liter. Okay, so question eight. Crazy refrigerators and balloons aside, let's pump up your bike tires and go for a ride. Unfortunately, the gauge on your bike pump is broken, but we're in general chemistry. We can use science to figure out how much we need to pump up this bike tire. We do need to know a few things. So if your bike tire has a fixed volume, this is what you should do every time when you're reading these questions. You say, oh, volume of 0 0.478 liters. And it's 290 degrees Kelvin inside your house. So our temperature is equal to 290. Uh, and the tire is starting completely empty, so there's no air inside of it. How many moles do you need to add to your... Um, uh, how many moles do you need to add to the tire, is what it's talking about here, to add to pump your bike tires up to four atmospheres? 
All right, so you can fill these things in. This is, this is like a really, really key thing for word problems. Just as you're reading through the question, write down the variables that you're given. Um, okay, so four atmospheres. So the question here, and we're asked how many moles. So we can write N is moles. Now this should be familiar. We've got volume, pressure, temperature, number of moles. Oh, that's our ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. On any exam, you should have these different equations that you're given written out. And then you copy down the variables from the word problem and look for the equation that matches most of the variables. Easy way to, easy way to figure out what uh, problem you're or what equation you should be using. Because now we can take this and we can say, oh, well, we have four atmospheres times our volume of 0 0.478 equals N. N is what we're looking for, so we're going to leave that as N. R is a constant, so it's going to be 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And now we're going to multiply by 290. Okay, so now we just have to solve for n. And actually, the easiest way to do that is we can just take this. I'm going to copy it. This will make this easier for me. And I'm going to move, we're going to divide both sides by these numbers over here. They're a little big. But they'll go over here, right? And we're going to divide by those. So we'll do 4 times 0.478 divided by 0 0.0821, divided by 290, and n is going to be equal to 0 0.0803 equals n. Oh, no. I guess I wrote down the wrong number there. Uh, let me try something, because I think I used a different value of R, just slightly. So this could also be 0 0.08206, right? So it's just, this one is just rounded up a little bit. So 4 times 0 0.478 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 290. Ah, nope, I was just a little bit off on my answer that I wrote down. So it's... It should be uh, this, but you would pick the closest one um, in this case. So this is our answer for our number of moles. And we're going to actually take that into our next question here. So for number nine, we're going to have 0, 0.00. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, all right, so getting a number of moles to pump into your bike tire is a place to start. But how do we know the amount of moles that we've added? So we could measure the dimensions of the bike pump and calculate the number of moles added for every time you push the handle down. Now again, we're given these different variables. So volume, 0 0.1 liters. Uh, pressure, 1 atmosphere. And then temperature is equal to 290 Kelvin looking very similar to the last problem. Oh, and then look at that, n equals question mark, because it says how many moles are there in every full pump? So we're gonna use these, and our ideal gas law again, PV equals nRT, and we can calculate, we can calculate the number of moles that fill our bike pump under these conditions. And again, this is a matter of just plugging the numbers in. So one atmosphere times 0 0.1 liters. Great, somebody's smoking a cigarette outside now. And I have to close the window again. N is our question, right? We don't know what N is. Um, but we're going to multiply that by, again, R is a constant, 0 0.0821. And we're going to multiply that by our temperature of 290. Kelvin. All right, so it's one atmosphere times 0 0.1 
liter divided by 0 0.0821, and that, you know, also divided by 290. And that's going to give us n. So 1 times 0.1 equals that, divided by 0 0.0821, divided by 290, right, just doing the math that's on this side. You can 0 0.00420 moles is n. And so this is how many moles of air are in every full pump of our bike pump. Now we can take both of these things into question 10. How many times do you need to pump the bike pump to fill the tire to the right pressure? So we go back and we look at this. We say, okay, this number, 0 0.083, This is the amount of air in moles needed to fill the bike tire. And then our number from the previous question, 0 0.00420 moles. Uh, this is moles. It was an N. But this is a different N. This is the amount of air in moles for every pump of the bike pump. So what we need to know is how many times do we need to pump to get this amount? So you can do that by taking 0 0.0803 divided by 0 0.00420. So 0 0.083, sorry, 8. Ah, 0 0.0803 divided by 0 0.00420. And the number you come up with, uh, again, see this, this is kind of mistake, my mistakes in creating this, get 19.1. So we're going to need the closest one here is 20 pumps. And that will fill up our bike tire. So the answer for question 10 is. 20 pumps. And this is just, you know, some, some critical thinking. Um, it's like asking, you know, if you have a, if you have a bucket that holds 10 gallons, right? So if we have a bucket and it holds, um, let's not do gallons. Let's do, it holds 128 cups of water and you have a measuring cup that's four cups. All right, so this is your measuring cup. How many measuring cups is it gonna to take to fill up your bucket? So you just do 128 divided by four, uh, which I think is 32. Yeah, so it'd be 32. So you'd have to fill up 32 of your measuring cups to fill this bucket with water. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.